Ag Amazing! This is Sir Bass of Sir Bass TV. In this three-part science tutorial series, we are going to describe motion in one dimension. Video 1 will focus on distance and displacement, Video 2 on speed and velocity, and Video 3 on acceleration. Are you ready to learn? If you find this video helpful, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Do not forget to like, share, and comment hashtag AgAmazing. Let's go! Many of the things around us move. Some move slowly like turtles and clouds, others move faster like trains. But how can you say that an object is in motion? Take a look at this example. Is the ambulance carrying the vaccine in motion? You are right. The ambulance is in motion. But what is your basis in saying that the car is in motion? Correct. The car is in motion because its position is changing. It moved from the airport to the hospital. When an object changes position during a period of time, the object is said to be in motion. To find out if there is a change in position, we use a reference point. A reference point is defined as the starting point or the origin for measuring motion. It is our basis in determining if an object is changing its position. In our previous example, the airport is where the ambulance started moving. So in this case, the airport is our point of reference. In reaching the hospital, the ambulance changed its position or location from the airport to the hospital. Therefore, motion has been observed. To define, motion is a continuous change in position of an object with respect to a reference point for a particular time interval. When the object is not changing its position at a given time interval, it is said to be at rest. You already know that motion is defined as the change in position for a particular time interval. Let us start describing motion by finding out how far did the object travel after it changed its position. There are two ways to find out how far did the object travel. First is by measuring the total length of the path traveled by the object which is called the distance. And second, by measuring the distance between the initial position and final position of the object which is called the displacement. Let us first talk about distance. Take a look at this example. A dog ran 10 meters to the east, then 5 meters to the south, and another 10 meters to the west. From this example, what is the total length traveled by the dog? To find this, we just need to add the length traveled by the dog from its original position to is, which is 10 meter. From is to south, which is 5 meters, and from south to west, which is 10 meters. So, the total length traveled by the dog is 25 meters. In short, when we say distance, it is the total length of the entire path that the object or a person traveled in moving from one place to another. Distance is a scalar quantity. This means that it is specified by a magnitude alone. They are described with a single number indicating size, magnitude, or dimension. Example is 50 meters, which is a magnitude for distance. 50 is the number and meters is the unit. The standard unit of distance in the international systems of unit is meter. This can be represented by a small letter M. To get the distance traveled by an object, we just need to add all the lengths of the path covered by the object. It can be represented by the formula D, which is the distance traveled, is equals to D1 plus D2 plus D3, wherein D1 is distance 1, D2 is distance 2, and D3 is distance 3. This will depend on the number of lengths covered by the object. The value of distance is always positive. Let us now talk about displacement. 
Displacement is the shortest distance between the object's initial position and final position. It is the straight distance from the initial position to the final position. It gives us an idea of how far the body from its is a starting point and in which direction. It is a vector quantity. Unlike scalar, vector quantity is described by both a magnitude and a direction. Example is 50 meters north, which is a value or magnitude for displacement. 50 meters is the magnitude and north is the direction. Just like distance, the standard unit of displacement in the international systems of unit is meter. Let us take another look with our example earlier. A dog ran 10 meters to the east, then 5 meters to the south, and another 10 meters to the west. We already know that the distance covered by the dog is 25 meters. Let us now find out its displacement. To find this, we just need to measure the distance between the initial position and the final position of the object. Thus, the displacement of the dog is 5 meters south. This means that the dog is 5 meters away from its starting position to its final position. If we are going to draw a straight line from the initial to the final position, we can see that the direction is going south. We can find the displacement mathematically by finding the difference between the final and initial position of an object. Unlike distance, the value of displacement can be positive, negative, or even zero. Let us find out more about distance and displacement by looking the following pictures. Take note that the distance traveled by an object is represented by broken lines and its displacement is represented by continuous lines. What do you think is the difference between distance and displacement based from the given pictures? Correct! Displacement always follow a straight line. On the other hand, distance does not always follow a straight line. Displacement measures the length of the straight line that connects the object's point of origin and its point of destination. On the other hand, Distance measures the length of the path traveled by the object. Next question is, can displacement be equal to distance? Yes, this can happen when the path traveled is a straight line. In this example, the distance traveled by the dog from tree to the house is 10 meter. And the displacement is 10 meter is. Another question, can displacement be greater than the distance? Why? The answer is no. It can be shorter but it cannot be greater than the distance. Remember, displacement is the shortest length between the object's point of origin and its point of destination. What if the dog in the illustration go back to its starting position? What will be its total distance and what will be its displacement? Correct! Its total distance will increase two times or will double, but its displacement will become zero. Why do you think is the reason why its displacement is zero? It is because the starting position of the dog and its final position are the same. Thus, we cannot measure the distance between them. And that is the difference between distance and displacement. In this video, we were able to describe motion by answering how far did the object travel using the concepts of distance and displacement. In our next video, we are going to describe motion by describing how fast did the object move using the concepts of speed and velocity. See you on our next science lesson. Ag-ha-mazing!